I have a room here that's called, it's been ended up nicknamed the dark room. Um, and that's mainly because the items in that room were used in or around exorcisms, demonic cases, uh, violent energies attached to them. It's, uh, it's an optional room for a guest. There's one thing that I will not do is force somebody or trick somebody into going into the room when they're not going to feel comfortable with it. Oh shit, look at, look at, oh, oh, oh my god. Okay. We thought that this video would only end up being a short segment in a much longer video, in the penitentiary video actually, but the dark haunting that we uncovered inside of this haunted museum turned a short clip into a full movie. This haunted museum is home to all sorts of horrifying artifacts from haunted dolls to ritual items to cursed puppets and even 666 Bibles. One of the most haunted objects supposedly on the planet ranked on a ton of lists is actually inside of this museum. And it's in an unassuming town in West Virginia. In this episode, we're investigating the Archives of the Afterlife, a wonderful small paranormal museum that, uh, that definitely packs a punch, if you know what I mean. So as we walked into the museum, one of the things that really bothers me are things like items that have attachments because I, I feel I've always been kind of an intuitive slash empath and, and those things really always kind of just give me a very uneasy feeling. I feel uh, the energy of these attachments, if it's sadness or you know anger, so overall, just a, a very uneasy feeling walking in there. First of all, I want to welcome you guys uh, here to the Archive of the Afterlife. My name is Steve. I'm the owner and uh, curator. Um, I want to give you guys a quick walkthrough of some of the items that we have here in the collection. And at the end of it, I'll show you a couple items that I brought home from my personal collection. Right here, we have a lot of uh, bricks. Um, the brick collection kind of started off as just me just wanting to collect items that pertain to places I investigated at or had visited. And then over the course of time, I would discover that some of them, unfortunately, were torn down, or like in the case of the Emmett House, uh, unfortunately, it caught fire and burnt down. So what I started doing is not only uh, writing down the bottom of them where they're from, but just incorporating a little bit of the history to kind of keep the history alive. So that's why the brick collection's here. Uh, likewise with some of the sod here, these are also from historical places and haunted places. Um, I do have a set that I have at home. I had a speaking event not too long ago and I forgot to bring them out today. Uh, but I have five sod samples from the five Jack the Ripper victims from their grave sites. And grave areas because three of them are actually in Potter's graves. So there's not really a specific area that you can go to to visit them. So. But I have some from pretty much all over. We have uh, from Tomb Sod from George McKenzie over in um, Edinburgh, Scotland. Rumor has it that some of the sod from this place actually still has human DNA in it because of how many uh, executions were conducted in that area. Got some from the uh, the Amityville, uh, the DeFeo family cemetery plot that was sent in by a supporter of the museum, we'll say. Uh, we have some stuff from Gettysburg, um, uh, local people, actually my seventh great grandfather who was the, uh, one of the original settlers of Moundsville. So a little bit of his graves out here. My idea was to see if any energy comes with that. So it's kind of turned into like a, a battery, if you will, for, for spiritual energy. We'll head on in here. You see, this used to be the kitchen of the house, um, but uh, right now it's my uh, mortuary collection. So I have a couple embalming tables. This embalming table here came from Imes Funeral Home in New Martinsville, West Virginia. And that one over there came from Nelson Funeral Home in Sistersville, West Virginia. Now around the corner there's another door. Uh, that's just storage, but at any point you guys can check it out. Um, some totes in there, a couple tables and whatnot. Other items in here would include my mortuary uh, embalming set. Um, I do have a bunch of items that were just donated. I don't have a home for them yet, but there's a bunch of stuff here that came out of a Green County Poor Farm. That's another area to definitely check out. Green County, Pennsylvania. Now back in here, um, this room doesn't really uh, pertain to the ghost stuff, but it keeps it from stacking up at my house. So <laughs> from this doorway to the corner behind you guys, uh, it's pretty much a majority of the collection that I've collected involving the former West Virginia State Penitentiary. Um, I was a tour guide there for about 15 years, so it holds a big spot in my heart. I love that place. I'm really glad you guys got to visit there. So hopefully you guys had a good investigation. Now from that corner of the doorway behind me, this whole area here, was the original museum idea I had called uh, World of Wars Museum, but now it's just an exhibit. Um, I love collecting anything military. 
Um, a lot of my stuff I've collected from the military before I even got into collecting haunted items and oddities and stuff like that. A lot of the items that people like to come see are these items here. These come directly out of the battlefields over in Europe. So everything down here in the bottom case, um, except for the fork, the knife, the belt buckle, and the dog tag, um, everything else came uh, from Latvia. And the four helmets are German helmets. The two helmets up here are from Latvia. They're Russian helmets. This right here is an instrument panel out of an IL-2 Sturmovik jet. This was found behind German lines in the Curlin pocket up near the Baltic Sea in Latvia. The two German helmets here are from Lithuania. And the canteen that has the uh, coconut fibers on it, that was from a Russian city called Volgograd, but back in World War II era, that was Stalingrad. So the holes that you see in any of these uh, are, in fact, bullet holes, shrapnel holes uh, from, you know, when they were last used in, uh, during the war. Uh, some cool things people like seeing here in the uh, larger muzzle tip is an MG42, and the small one is an MG34, uh, German machine guns. So this is out of a Panzer's turret uh, tank. Wow. That, that's one of the optic lenses. Those helmets are crazy. Yeah. I imagine the yeah. bullets. Uh, yeah, and so well, and how perfect. A lot of the uh, these came from a guy I got to be good friends with. He's, his name's Maurice, and he volunteers with a group called Legenda. Uh, they call it Legenda, but Legenda is the same thing. And what they are, they're volunteers. And let's say if uh, this couple said, "Well, we were told the end of our cornfield that there's German soldiers buried from World War II." Well, Legenda. The volunteers will come out with their metal detectors and search for said graves. Now, these items do not come from the graves. These come from the process of finding the graves. And what they do with the items that do not come from uh, said graves is they put them up on a 40-hour auction because everybody who is with Legenda is volunteer. So what this does is helps them gain a little bit of money for gas and food. For the volunteers and what they normally do if they can uh, if they find any uh, literature or ID uh, they'll try to find the next of kin for each soldier regardless if it's German or Russian and try to find the next of kin to tell them we're going to be burying so-and-so their loved one and I will invite them to the service or the uh, uh, the burial and they'll give them a proper military burial and stuff like that it, Sometimes churches will volunteer a certain area of their graveyard or something like that, or cemetery. Uh, well, we'll head on this way. Okay. Now, this, uh, the items in here, a lot of them, um, I call them rescues. So a lot of them were being going to be thrown away from churches they were going to tear down. So unfortunately, with some of them, like the lecterns, I was able to get those. But a few of the items in here that have uh, shown signs of energy attachment would be the wicker coin casket behind you, and over there on the other side of the room would be the white child's viewing casket. Now, the wicker cooling casket, my friend Steve Kwiatkowski was able to hook me up with that one. That came from the Gettysburg area. I'm not sure where exactly the white uh, child's viewing casket was, but I do know that it came from the Himes Funeral Home. And beyond that, I'm not sure uh, what any of the history is on that one. Interesting. I got a lot of cool stuff, yeah. dude. I'm glad. I'm glad you guys like it. <laughs> this is the uh, the doll room. Now behind the curtain over there, originally uh, my friend Gina uh, would do complimentary readings for our our day tour guests, but she got a new job as a traveling nurse, so she had to <laughs> kind of put a hex on that. So there's nothing <laughs> back there right now. But you'll find out that with the museum, um, I wanted to keep everything as transparent as possible. So you're not going to look underneath of a table and see fishing string and duct tape. Yeah. When I put the museum together, I wanted to definitely keep in mind uh, researchers. So when they would come in to investigate, they're not worried about hidden speakers and so on and so forth. You know what I mean? There's a lot of places around that. It's not about the research. It's about the entertainment factor. And I definitely wanted to... Uh, kind of stay true to the field so and you'll see back here I didn't use a like an opaque curtain you can look through it it's a full kitchen this used to be a stack duplex hmm. so you'll be able to look back there and see what's going on I have a couple boxes stacked back here but so are there any dolls in here that are worth noting that are eerie um a few and I, what I've noticed with a lot of dolls and items it's like 
certain people, certain dolls, certain items react differently. Mm -hmm. It's like you meet someone for the first time, like meeting you guys for the first time. It's positive. You're comfortable. But you can also meet someone else on the same day. You're thinking, I'll never trust you a day in my life. You know what I mean? <laughs> I think that transfers over. You know, I don't, I don't definitely. Gut instinct kind of. But the, the mutilated effigy doll is definitely one of them. Uh, the story about her is right here. So before you leave, if you want, grab a snapshot of that. You can incorporate anything, all the information that you want. That's not a problem. Uh, the Ashen doll is probably one of my personal favorites. And she and the Sarah doll were probably the first two dolls in the collection. A lot of the ladies that visit the museum, however, um, will report Charlie. He's back there in the red chair. Um, will report feeling that they're being watched by him. Now, mm -hmm. some people, especially women, have reported they've actually said they've seen his eyes move. I've not experienced that, and I find it interesting because um, his eyes are actually painted on. Hmm. They don't move. They're not one oh. of those movable. Uh, oh, well, I used to have a fear of ventriloquist dummies, so <laughs> it's definitely you spookier. You to take them to a psychologist to actually get over that. When I was like six? Yeah. Really? Yeah. Goosebumps. Goosebumps, slabby. Oh, yeah. <laughs> my thing was, my, uh, my dad was the type that would let me watch anything I wanted to just so he could get back at my mom. You know, she said, I don't want him watching any horror movies. Well, he always had horror movies. On, so. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> he introduced me to Child's Play. Oh, and great. Then, uh, what did I get for Christmas? I got a cabbage patch doll. So. <laughs> and I don't know what Fair happened figure. to the doll, but uh, it didn't stay in the house too long. Now, the next room down here, uh, I kind of call it the, the general relic room. So it's kind of like the doll room, except I'd like to just want to separate dolls from just the little other objects. So come down here and check her out. Other stuff to read throughout the hallway here. And you'll find that a, there's a bunch of just odds and ends. Uh, but one of, uh, one of the many items in this room people do come to see would be the foot book right down there beside you. That's been on a couple top ten sites uh, on YouTube. Whenever that happened, I didn't know about it. A friend would say, hey, you need to check out this top ten, your, your foot book's on it. I'm like, okay, I didn't know about it. But they would say it's a cursed book, it's a cursed item. And it's really not. It's just from a very, very sad uh, situation. But it was uh, linked to a home over in St. Clairsville, actually, uh, in the East Richland area. Uh, but it was connected to a quadruple homicide. And unfortunately, one of the four victims was a two-year-old. And we feel that she, she's actually connected to the, to the foot book itself. And a friend of mine, Gary Brandon, uh, for the, you know, during the short time I was on the fire department in Moundsville, uh, he and I both strongly feel that the stains on the front cover and there's actually some of the back cover are actually blood stains. But a friend of mine, uh, Shane Berge, who lives in Texas now, uh, he had actually had a case, he's also a paranormal researcher, where a lady contacted him and said that she would hear what sounded like a kid running through her house and giggling. So he went and couple, did a couple investigations at her house and it came down to him asking her, did you bring anything into your house lately? And she says, yes, I, brought, I bought some child items at a yard sale for her grandbabies. So he went through each individual item and during his investigation uh, was getting indications, if you will, with his uh, uh, equipment that there was energy attached to the foot book. And he asked her, where'd you get the foot book? She told him, he went to the, the address, did some research and found out that the address was directly next door from the house that had the, the quadruple homicide. Wow. So it led him pretty much right directly to the address. So it's a very, very sad situation. It's it's not a cursed item. I have a room here that's called, it's been up, nicknamed the dark room. Um, and that's mainly because the items in that room were used in or around exorcisms, demonic cases, uh, violent energies attached to them. It's uh, it's an optional room for a guest. There's one thing that I will not do is force somebody or trick somebody into going into the room when they're not going to feel comfortable with it. You know, this is not about going to a, an, enter, an entertainment based location where you're trying to scare somebody. This is to inform or somehow satiate someone's curiosity. And that's also why I went back into, uh, went back into schooling college for church ministries. I am ordained, so I do a lot with house blessings and helping people equip themselves to protect themselves and protect their families involving, you know, spiritual warfare and spiritual dangers and stuff like that. I think it's 
very important and I think it gets overlooked a lot in the paranormal community. A lot of that's kind of why these items are here. Some items here may have just had a few blips on a REM pod or a K2 meter. Some of them have caused a lot more uh, uh, activity at people's houses or workplaces and stuff like that. So, yeah, and so far nothing in here has needed to be moved on to the dark room. <laughs> okay, <yet>. alright. <laughs> so, and one, oh, this is another cool thing. I end up forgetting about the closet here. Uh, we, I do have a couple of hair strands from Murray Levu. Wow. The Queen. That was given to me by a friend of mine, uh, Kim Woods, and her friend, uh, Bruce Laffin. Um, he actually bought some of her estate, so she actually wears one of Marie LaVue's rings. Wow. So, there's some other That would be crazy. Yeah. Marie's ring. Oh, is this like a hate doll? Uh, it's similar, yes. It looks like. Yeah, it has the nails driven into it. Uh, having collected these items and items like these for some time, you, you kind of just you just kind of get in tune with you with the type of energies and stuff like that off items. So sometimes it's kind of hard to even go into an antique shop just for fun. You never know what you're going to run into, which is where I got the uh, the box right there on the top shelf. And everyone comes in here and asks me, is this is it a Dybbuk box? Is it a, no, it's not a Dybbuk box. One of the first things I picked up off of with that box actually was a very positive energy. And the first thing, the impression I got off of it was that was used at one time to hold uh, a person or family's like cherished heirlooms and stuff like that. So, you know, there's, it's not just demons and run for your life, run down a hallway and shake a flashlight. You know, that does happen, very <laughs> rare. But, uh, you know, a lot of it's just them reaching out to say hi. Because you got to think some of them, their families have moved on and passed away, and a lot of them don't have anyone that will come, that actually comes back to say hello to them. You know, sometimes they don't. I feel sometimes they don't know that they can move on and with whatever the next step is. Right. The next step. I will say it does look like that divot box. <laughs> I can see why people say that. I'm, the, I have a couple that I, I'm a, I'm supposed to be getting that are alleged uh, divot boxes, but I don't have them yet. So. So the museum has so many wonderful artifacts. I mean, it has the Bible of a serial killer. It has an executioner's cap from the penitentiary. It's got war memorabilia, funeral memorabilia, coffins, caskets. But upstairs in the museum with the doll room, with the foot book, and as you'll see in a second, the dark room, that's where this place really starts to get spooky and uh, where the energy, for me at least, definitely started to shift. This is my uh, newest rabbit hole, if you will. Uh, it started off with the bed frame. It's one of the more uh, haunted items that I have. This came from Eloise Psychiatric Hospital up in Michigan. And shortly after I got this, I got the uh, patient's blanket from Battle Creek Sanitarium, and the stool is also from Battle Creek Sanitarium. Newest item I have here. I bought this just for the aesthetic purposes because it was a good deal and it fit the room but one of the last groups that were in here put a rim pod in the seat and we're actually getting hits off of the rim pod when it was sitting on the chair so as you can tell this is, could have been a dental chair uh it could have been used also to prop up a person for post-mortem photography uh it could have been used to strap someone into to do a lobotomy these type of chairs were used for multiple different reasons so it's when I got this, there was no history that came with it. I just got it because I didn't have one of these chairs yet. <laughs> so, so it's hard to tell what the history with this item is, but I can tell you I bought it uh, in Columbus, Ohio. So that's that's where this chair came from, from what knowledge I do have. Some of the other items in here that have uh, moved, if you will, on their own would be the blue dress. Now this moved at the old location and it was flat against the wall. Um, here, I don't have the fan on as you see, uh, so it can actually move a lot easier where it is. So if something does happen, you'll just have to try to prove by disproving it, by debunking it. Right. Uh, some of the items that are in the case, which I haven't screwed shut because I don't have a lock cord, that are, that are definitely active would be the forks and spoons. The readout for them is up here. It says Skull Kill, Skull Kill Insane Asylum. I probably completely butchered that first name, <laughs> but it's uh, up around... Uh, where Penn State is. So the building, I had the picture in the readout, uh, was actually torn down when they were expending Penn State University. So it's somewhat local. The two uh, white gowns are from Massillon State Hospital. 
some of the random items in here to eventually, like I said, I'm hoping to be relocating. And the next, uh, the next room will be the last room of the walkthrough, and it is the dark room. And the reason the, the latch is on here is because the knob's broke. <laughs> so when we walked into the dark room, I could feel like things were off right away. You could really just sense, again, kind of the more angry, I, I'd say, abusive type of, a, of spirit feel to me. And it just felt heavy when you walk in the door immediately crossing that threshold. I really didn't like how it felt in there and I, I just didn't want to stay very long. Go on in, check her out. You notice there's not as many items in this room and that's because not everything is going to be linked to an exorcism or linked to a demonic case or linked to violent energy. Uh, it's a very uh, uh, small spectrum of collecting haunted items, but it does exist. Uh, one of the main items in this room that has physically harmed people has led uh, us to believe that there is a demonic attachment to it because of the negative response towards anything of, of you know, holy nature or whatever, and that would be the Hope doll right over there, the, the three-foot doll over there against the wall. Um, we've actually recorded her moving uh, on one of our episodes and we took her out and put her in this chair here which I bought this chair for an experiment but a friend of mine who is a, a trusted psychic that I trust her said that she feels someone actually died in this chair but I do have a picture that if you want it's on my phone that came from a, a girl she's about 15 or 16 and her and her mom are the only two up here my friend Vicky who's a volunteer we were downstairs in the like the lobby area if you will and they were the only two in the whole museum, and they were all up here. And they had come downstairs, and her mom says, I want you to look at something on my daughter's back. And I'm like, okay, what's wrong? She said, well, I sat down, and I tried to talk to Hope. Now, I told her, this is a room you, really, you don't toy around with stuff in this room. You know, just, just you know, please be, be mindful, you know. Well, she said, I sat down on the floor and tried to talk to Hope. And I said, okay, what happened? She said, well, then my back started burning really bad. And then her mom goes, I want to show you what happened. So she turned around and lifted the back of her, her daughter's shirt. And there was like scratch, almost like claw marks on her back. Now this wasn't like as white as fingertips. It looked like cat scratches, but they were a little bit wider than a typical cat. You know what I mean? But that, that is also linked to her. Uh, one of the names that was picked up off of this item uh, by an, a couple of investigators that were here. Uh, they picked up the name Class A EVP of Leviathan. And if I hadn't have been here, I'm like, eh, come on. You know what I mean? But that was picked up off of her because I was sitting right over there in the black chair when that, was, when that happened. Another, item, another th item in here that does have a lot of that type of energy attached to it would be the Betsy Bell doll. And she's over there in that little corner stand. Curtis Lee was the original owner of her. And he recorded the name. I listened to his file. Um, the name Belzebub came across to that. And also with uh, my buddies with Paranormal Quest, we also picked up on half of the name. We didn't get the full name of that, but it was Beelzeb, and it stopped. It got, the, the word got cut off, basically. A lot of the items in here are very negative. Uh, the mirror, the same situation. That came from our cursed cabin investigation. That's actually a portal. It's a very extensive uh, video, but um, when I first got to that location, I looked at the mirror and I felt very pulled to the mirror. And you can see on it, I know it's kind of a tight situation here, where the uh, like the eye shape is, that's because of me. When I first got there, me being me, I'm like, okay, is this clean up? It's kind of interesting looking. And I wasn't thinking necessarily, you know, just leave it alone, <laughs> which, you know, I should have done. Um, but after that first investigation, all I could think of was that mirror because during the investigation our first visit Jason got scratched so that kind of took our focus off the mirror but again all I could think of I want that mirror like I have to have that mirror so eventually before the second investigation Sue who who was the property owner uh, allowed us to remove it from the house and um, multiple people will sometimes get like a the black chair or one of the other chairs I have and will actually sit close the door and do a one-on-one -on -one with the actual mirror that way a lot of uh, a couple events took place with Sue and her family that were very, very tragic. 
Um, first things first, any guy that's associated with that cabin that either lived in the cabin or shortly after, or shortly after leaving the cabin is dead, has died. Whether it's heart attack, accident, so, but it happened so frequent enough that they believed that there was a curse to the cabin. So we wanted to find out, is there one? Between the first and second investigation of the cabin, Sue said a young boy, not, not, not a family member, but a, a young boy approached them and, and asked if he could go out to the cabin and look and see if there was any uh, copper. Because the cabin's kind of being reclaimed by nature. You know, no one lives in it. And she, says, I, she told him that I wouldn't go out there. Now, apparently the kid went out there because three days later, above her house on the main road, now they live out in Logan County, West Virginia, out in the middle of nowhere. Uh, the young boy was found up in the ditch, died of an overdose. So that's another death that she had felt was linked to the cabin because he went and took something from the cabin. Wow. Um, this one really bothered us because Sue and her husband were very, very nice people. There were only three men left in the family that were alive. We were supposed to investigate the third time. Now, and I guess this, this bothers me because with what happened, we were supposed to be there the date that the tragedy happened. So we were supposed to go out there and investigate again for a third time. About a week and a half before, Sue call, called a, a Polly, Dave's mom, and said, we're going to have to reschedule. Uh, something came up. And we're like, well, at that time, we're like, okay, cool, no problem. Now, the day we were supposed to be out there, though, her oldest son, she had two sons. One was special needs. And he was probably 17, 18. Her oldest son, though, got out of jail, came home, and shot and killed his parents, and then made a run for it for the Kentucky line, and it was suicide by cop. So that leaves one male left in the family. Oh, my. And that was yeah. when you guys were supposed to be there? We were supposed to be there. We would have been there the night that it happened investigating. So... Their house, I say, here's the main road coming up the hillside. You turn down their lane. Their house they lived in was right here. The cabin was about 300 yards down this way. So we would have been there investigating. We would have heard the shots, like, but it would have been crystal clear. It was when when Dave and Ryan came out, was day I was working out here, they told me, I'm like, and that was one of the first times in my life, like, I'm like, holy crap. You know, it just it really just took the wind out of us. You know, we tried to communicate with her here. Uh, we didn't. We didn't post it. Nothing like that. We just wanted to say, "Hey, Sue, if you can hear us, you know, we love you. We're sorry with what happened. You know, just wanted to pay her respects." And we were getting, we were getting hits on the REM pod and K2s. That's wild. We were just sitting right here in the vicinity of the, of the, of the mirror. But we believe that the mirror is somehow linked to the deaths of the men from that family involving the land, because that land's been in their family since way back when. Wow. What do you think is the freakiest item here? The hook doll. Hook doll. And why Why is the, it supposed to be haunted? Is there any history to it? The hook doll, my friend Judy, uh, she does a lot of estate sales and buys and flips antiques and stuff. Beautiful person, trustworthy person, you know, trust her, her input. And she'll always call me once in a while and go, hey, I have something for you, you know? And I'm like, okay, cool. So this happened. She had been at a house on Highland Avenue in Moundsville. The old man who owned the house is dead. She was at the house, her and her friend, um, Ed. They had gone through the whole main level of the house to uh, look at items to resell and stuff. She said, eventually the old guy said, I have some stuff down in the basement. If you want to look through it, you can head down the basement and look. Now to this day, she doesn't know if the old man did this, her friend did it as a joke, if a gust of wind or a vacuum did this or something else. But something slammed the basement door behind her after she went down to the point where it would not open. She didn't know if it was locked or just stuck. They couldn't figure it out. Because after, after about 15 minutes or so, they were eventually able to get the door open. But while she was down there, she went, just went and looked throughout the basement. And then she found this doll leaning against, all by itself, leaning in the corner against the wall. Hmm. Now, she said, as soon as I saw that doll, I felt uncomfortable. I didn't like the doll, and I thought it's something that you might be interested in. I was like, well, I appreciate it, you know. But what I felt was weird, not only just that from what she told me with what happened, is that when she got upstairs and she asked the old man, she said, well, there's a doll down in the corner. And she said, before I could finish, he goes, oh, you can have the doll. Like, like he knew hmm. pretty much what she was going to be talking about. Fast forward a little bit. She called me the same day 
and told me, she says, hey, Steve, I have something for you. And I'm like, well, I'll be out and about Monday or Tuesday. She says, no, I don't want this in my truck. I don't want this in my house. Can I bring it to your house now? And I'm like, okay, now you have my attention. <laughs> Even more so now. So she pulls up in her truck, and the doll's wrapped up in like a real dirty black garbage bag material. I'm looking at it before I actually picked it up. I'm like, gee, is that a body? <laughs> She's <laughs> like, she says, no. And it's like, she says, just look at it. So I kind of lifted one side of it, ended up being where the face was at. But the first thing I felt of when I picked up the bag, if you will, I, I sensed a lot of violence and anger and frustration and child abuse. It was like, just like that. And it just came to me. Uh, and through multiple investigation attempts with her, with my, with my, with my, guy, with my, uh, my buddies, and some other friends I have from different paranormal groups. They've all but concluded that a lo the energy attached to her is is anger, it's bad. There was a lot of profanity towards the, tr towards the Trinity, towards anything holy. So the last investigation we did, I put the crosses on there and put the rosary on there to see if we get a response. Now we had her up here in the chair. The second time, this is another time she moved. The first time she moved. The second time she didn't move. But I blessed the case before I put her back into it. And we had the uh, ghost tube running, uh, we had the digital recorders running, the cameras running, and they were pretty quiet uh, this time until I put her in through the doorway, the, the threshold of the case, if you will. And the, I think one of the, within the first three words I come across was like, was the F-bomb really, really loud. <laughs> and then there was an older male voice, an older female voice, and a young girl's voice. Now the young girl's voice we've heard before, and that's where the name Hope came from. So the little girl's voice said the name was Hope, which from my experience, there was never, that's not a young girl. It's not a young girl attached to her. And uh, I do know the whole, the, the big D word gets driven into the ground anymore nowadays. Uh, it's not really my style, but I, I'm also going to be upfront and honest with what we've gathered so far as evidence. So people can take it or leave it. And they're more than welcome to come and experience for themselves and investigate the Hope Doll or anything else in the in the collection. So, awesome. Well, do you want to go break out the other items? Yeah. If you're done in here, if there's nothing wow, else. That's done. interesting. So all of these are. This is more negative. Yeah, this right here. Some of them I do have the readouts with. This one came from a demonologist collection in Scotland. That one was what was bothering me, actually. He got busted for being too friendly with little boys, unfortunately. The uh, owner of the doll? The owner. He had a bunch of different things from his collections. Yeah, and then that's a poppet. That's the same, pretty much the same thing as a voodoo doll down there in the glass case. Um, one thing, unfortunately, I don't think they're long people to investigate, but if you get a chance to investigate in Savannah, Georgia, the Moon River Brewery, uh, that brick right over there came from the Moon River Brewery. That was probably one of the creepiest experiences that I've ever had. Easily top five. Um, didn't even really happen to me. It happened to my buddy Dave. And for about a half an hour of that investigation, he has no recollection of even being there. He was walking through a pitch black building, I mean pitch black, pitch black, no flashlight, Like he, but he walked through it like he had lived there his whole life. <laughs> like he didn't run into a, a wall, didn't trip on any steps, nothing. And some other things that happened in that investigation really, uh, really weirded us out. But the brick, one of the employees of Moon River Brewery, we were told by the lady who did our walkthrough, found it interesting enough to take some of the bricks up in the attic and form a goetic summoning circle. Now I had my friend Chris Nye, he looked at some of the pictures and videos of our investigation and from his studies, his experience, he mentioned a goetic summoning circle. And he mentioned that, because we got on Google, <laughs> Google Maps to show him which way the guy would have been sitting and he said he would have been sitting his back towards the east and of course with Chris's opinion on the matter, he was facing the dark, he was facing where the sun was setting. And he feels that the person doing that summoning, because he was using a spirit board inside the circle made of brick, um, that he didn't close it properly. And um, with what happened with Dave, we decided that it was best to actually ship the brick via UPS home, which turned out to be a better decision because now 
I have the paperwork, I have the box proving that it's shipped from the UPS station right around the block from Moon River Brewery. <laughs> right. So it kind of helped a little bit with uh, confirming where the brick came from. Whenever I stop at night and put everything up, yeah. normally when I go through the chapel the first time, it's nice and comfortable. Mm -hmm. When when I'm leaving and locking up, I don't even want to look in that area. That, right, oh, that's the feeling I think I got. Change. Right? Do you? <laughs> that, that's why I meant why I set it right there. <laughs> I mean, I'm feeling a vibe right here when I walk through. But that's on the embalming table? Sure. I was told by a guy who lived here, and it's weird, ever since I moved the museum in here, I've had at least five people come up and say, hey, I used to live in the apartment or lived in the house. I'm like, anything weird happen? And normally it's no, but one guy told me that he had heard two different, like two different families, if you will. There's an older man and an older lady had passed away in the house. But there was a lady who lived when it was a stacked duplex. Her name was Sherry. She and some friends were driving down around Fairmont, West Virginia, and they had been partying maybe, and they had a very bad car accident involving a semi but she had lived here when that happened. And of course, she didn't make it. Now, the one thing that, that did happen before I moved the collection in here, we were fortunate enough, and this happened by accident, to go to investigate the house before I moved anything into the house. Uh, we were supposed to investigate one of the uh, train tunnels down around Clarksburg, and it was so windy, you couldn't do anything. It was like a wind tunnel, <laughs> you know? <laughs> and I got a hold of Larry, who owns the house. I'm running it right now. And I said, hey, we were supposed to do this, this, and that. Is there any way we can investigate the house? I already talked to him about renting here, and I was about ready to say, yeah, I'll rent. And he says, yeah, sure. So we drove all the way up, hit Moundsville, got the key, drove all the way back out here to do a few hours investigating. So we had an episode, you know, something to, to put up. And we were doing our abandonment technique. Now, on the side of the house, both of our cars were parked, behind, like one in front of the other on the side. We had set everything up in here, cameras, recorders, REM pod, and so on and so forth. And we had locked up and walked out and we were sitting in the cars. Now, that day, there had been a huge windstorm that came through Cameron and knocked out all the power. So there was no electricity in the house. And you could hear like four generators running outside. In what is now the military room, we had to use one of our newer lights because we just needed to have that room lit up for the camera because we didn't have... Uh, a, a, a night shot camera in that one. We're using one of our cannons. We're sitting there out in the car and I noticed Ryan had got out real quietly to go up to Dave's car and was kneeled down by his door and they were talking back and forth because Dave was doing a live. And I noticed that the light dimmed, which the, cam the lights we have, you can dim them or brighten them or turn them on and off. Either way, there's switches and, and an do that. So it started dimming. I'm thinking, there's no way that battery's dying already that was brand freshly charged before we left Moundsville and eventually it turned off then turned back on and then Ryan he didn't notice it at the time he came back got into his car I said, hey, dude, does the light because you can see that there's two windows in that room because where we we're sitting in the car you can easily see them and I said these lights are going on and off man he's like I said someone better not got into the house because I'm like I'm, I'm not in the mood <laughs> we started watching and the light dimmed went back up to bright. So we all decided to cut the abandonment short. We came in through the doorway, one lined up after the other, and walked into the room. The light was off, I believe, when we walked into the room. As I went through the doorway, the light turned on. The light was in the corner back where the, uh, the, the bed is now. And again, it was running off a battery pack. Nothing's plugged into the wall at all. So that really kind of startled us. We went over there, shook it, and nothing's loose. We even, Ryan even messaged one of the reps from Newer to say, hey, has this been reported before? And everything, they said, no, nothing's been reported like that at all. So nothing was faulty or anything. But another thing happened with the camera that was in this room, it was pointing in towards this way, was a female voice that said, hey, like that. And I thought it was interesting after doing the research about Sherry, because they said Sherry the lady who died in the car wreck that lived upstairs was kind of like the life of the party. She was a prankster. She was just a really, you know, an outgoing person. And it got me thinking, I wonder if that was Sherry. You know, just kind of say, hey, I'm here. You know, and because after that, we've heard some things happen before, but nothing down here has been anything too bad, you know, too too negative, nothing like that. So I think 
Yeah, she's actually buried up on up on the hill too. But uh, yeah. Okay. That's what you wanted to see, and I don't have any cool boxes to put it in yet. <laughs> oh, I brought something else too. I'm not sure where this actually came from, but it's a cool little piece that I picked up. They use these for the uh, to put people under. Oh. It's like ether. A, ether. That's it. I can't think of the word. Mm -hmm. Words are hard. Mm -hmm. So you put the fabric over top. The gauze. Oh, wow. Drop of ether. <laughs> That's cool. Some drops of ether. Yeah. I bought a case and it came in yesterday and it doesn't fit. So I wanted, I need a case to put my Bible in. I got a picture of it right here. They were selling copies of it, so I came. And it's very unassuming. But there it is. Wow. <laughs> so this Bible is owned by a serial killer. Yes, Eileen Warnos. And I really couldn't help but feel, I don't know, I don't use the word connected, but just pulled to her situation because I don't condone, I don't condone what she did. But I do feel that she belonged in a state hospital or type of setup rather than what happened with her because I... I think they profited too much money off of her situation. But with what her childhood was, she had a very slim chance at anything to have a, a reasonable life. Still is such a cool item, though. Yeah. Wow. It took me a while to get it. <laughs> but as soon as I saw it, I'm like, and I didn't really, everyone knows about Manson and Bundy, and which are cool as can be, you know what I mean? They're, the history, the story behind them and stuff like that. But, you know, for some reason I saw... The Bible, and I was like, well, who's Eileen Warnos? You know, and I looked it up, and I'm like, man. You know, just from that point, when I first really kind of heard about her, I just kind of felt pulled to her story that way, so whatnot. So here is the cap to the electric chair from the former West Virginia State Penitentiary. Oh, my God. That's gnarly. I found this two elderly women who had an eBay site. Really? Yeah, and the only reason um, I felt very comfortable with taking a chance on it, if you will, is because one little thing that people don't realize, they use copper mm. for the rivets. That's because it's highly conductive. Mm -hmm. Also, when you look on the bottom of this, it's real smooth here, real smooth right here, and that's where the two clamps would have went on. Mm. Now, a lot of people that have come in here have asked, and, or I've mentioned that this does not look like your typical execution cap. And they're right. The chair itself and anything involving or linked to the chair, except for like the generators and stuff like that, were all made in-house. They weren't ordered and brought in. So this right here, probably an inmate welded that all together and put it all together. At our local historical society, I have three tables and a jewelry box made by uh, Paul Glenn, and he was the inmate who designed and built the electric chair. So I own furniture made by him, but I put at the Historical Society Museum. So how many people did this? Nine. And uh, all, remember, in the room, yeah, in the case, yeah, those nine. Curious to see that. Yeah, those nine men were the ones who wore the cap when they were executed. That's yeah. a, a terrible way to die, too. Let me get it back out for you. Why I put it away? Electric shock to the brain. You can definitely tell this had been soaked many, many times, the leather. And these are leather looped here. Is that what they would do, is soak them just in regular water um, for con connectivity? or what, what, what Yeah, what it does is it different? forms a direct line link yeah. from the cap through the brain, through the heart, and out the second electrode, which would be on the left leg, I believe. Okay. So basically the human body actually completes the circuit. And... The numbers might be different, but basically it solidifies the blood throughout the, the heart especially and forms a massive clot, forms a heart attack, and kills the individual. But they say, last time I remember, because it's been, it's been a while since I've done a day toward the prison, <laughs> yeah. a little bit foggy, but I think it was the body temperature would rise upwards of about 200 to 210 degrees Fahrenheit during the, ex during the execution. So it literally, it literally cooks uh, the blood. And, f and forms the clot and forms a heart attack. So, but it's, it's, it's like as fast as a bullet. You would say that because of the history here and all of your items, this building, your museum's haunted. Absolutely.
you know, I don't really have to sell the place. The place, you know, it, it's its own entity in, in itself. The collection is. Because when I had to move, the first time I had to move, we had a bad, bad roof. Then we moved to the community center location, another bad roof. And I'm running here. You know, so far, nothing bad's happened. But uh, no matter where it's at, whether it's a few items at a speaking event that I'm at or it's all under one roof, it'll, it, it'll talk to you. You know, it'll definitely talk to you. Whether it's something up in the dark room that is dark in nature, or the footbook upstairs, which uh, involves a little two-year-old that unfortunately her life was cut short. You know, it just depends on it depends on the individuals who are visiting, and depends on how their energy correlates with the energies that are already here. So I, for some reason, felt compelled to start our investigation in the doll room. I don't know why I was feeling like the doll room was the room to start off in, but as you'll see in a second, it really started to make sense once we began investigating. Now, as you're going to see in the footage, it seemed like there was an entity in that room that was trying to protect us. It was trying to help us. It was trying to keep us away from something else, possibly in that room or on that floor. So the energy in that museum is highly intelligent. There's, there's a lot of different energies in there, but it was definitely talking to us that night. And it definitely didn't hurt that there was a massive thunderstorm outside. Okay, everybody, so we're currently upstairs in the Haunted Museum. We are going to be investigating this place room by room and kind of diving into the different stories that this building and these items have to share. Um, right now we're in the doll room. There are a number of very spooky dolls in here with different histories, including that doll right over there that the owner found while doing a paranormal investigation. They were led to find that doll and it was almost torn to shreds in a violent, angry manner. And they think it may have been used in some sort of a ritual to uh, invoke something. We're gonna end the night by investigating the dark room, which is where the demonic, the evil, the violently haunted items are held behind a locked door. And uh, I'm really excited. The energy is definitely here in this building and we've got all of our stuff set up. So let's do this. Okay. Feeling good, yeah. Unexpected to end up investigating this place. We came here just to do a little piece and it's like the, there's so much here. So I'm ready to go. And here's that doll, by the way titled it The Mutilated Effigy. Definitely kind of creepy. So we've got REM pod, REM pod, REM pod. We've got a lot of stuff set up in here. And this right here, this is our new device, the Envoy. So you turn this on and you can use different modes. You have a yes, no. You can have it select numbers. You can have it select emotions too. Okay, so I've got this on the emotion mode. So we'll see if it can pick an emotion. This thing goes off of EMF, actual physical touch, and uh, temperature changes. So if it picks up on any of those, it'll tell us what it detected, and then it'll choose an answer. So, all right, everybody. My name is Colin. I'm Jeff. If there's anybody here in the museum, we really want to talk to you tonight. We have all these different little toys you can play with. If you see anything with a light, you can go tap one of those. And if you go up to any of those and touch them, it'll show us that you're here with us. So, yeah, we're excited to get to know you. If you are in this room, can you go up and touch one of the lights near the doll that you like the most. All you have to do is go like this. Oh, that was the, the ventriloquist got me. Can you light it up a little bit more? Thank you. Keep that was coming. Weird timing. Keep that coming. hasn't gone off at all. No, keep coming. I'm just walking a little closer. Show me you're here. A little bit more, please. It's interesting that that's the most haunted doll, too. Is it? Oh, it is. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Ooh. Got some energy. 
Thank you. Charlie, if that's you, can you grab that little piece of metal really tightly? I'm going to turn the red light on. Okay. Anybody else? Anybody else in here? Please feel free to come forward. We're friendly. We're just here to communicate with you. Completely respectful. Okay, now it's on a lighter mode right here. As you can see, that's I, those readings came from me, but they'll be able to tell us letters if something picks out a letter. If you are in this room, you can come over here and touch this thing when you see the letter that you want on there. Like right now it says C. If you could tell us your name, that would be awesome. Or C for Charlie. Oh, true, true. Oh, what was that chirp? I don't know. That is weird. Charlie, are you in this room with us? Now's your time, anybody, to come forward. We're here. We're, we're wanting to listen to you. Here, look. Maybe this is a little high for you. Yeah, do it. Oh. Okay, Charlie again. Charlie, can you can you really grab that little antenna right there and make it go off? A little more, thank you. Keep using your energy. Let us know another way you're, that you're here. He's definitely over there. Yeah. There's something. Yeah. Because that's the only one that's going off in this whole room. Hey, Charlie, there's a little ball in your arm. Can you make that go off for me? It's like a toy. Keep going. Charlie, if you're sitting up there, you can also come down here, and I have this little box. If you can see, it says yes and no, and if you just reach out and touch this, like this, you can tell us an answer to our question. Can you hit it when it says yes, if there is somebody here? Is there somebody here with us? Can you come tap the little box right here? Oh, it said yes. Yes, okay. It actually said yes. Okay, okay thank you. Can you tell me, you? so when you did that, you said the word yes. Can you do that again? Oh, no. Oh my, really? It said no. It hasn't been going off for yeah, the last no, 20 minutes. Yeah. Can you tap it on yes if you're attached to one of these dolls in here? Oh, no. Oh, okay. No. Oh. Wow. Multiple no's. Are you attached to an object here in the museum? Can you tap the word yes if there's an object that you really like or you came with? Or one that you want us to concentrate on? Yes. Okay, oh. It said yes. Right. Are you in a different room right now? And you just walked over here? Yes. Oh, oh, cat ball. oh, oh cat ball. shit. Right here on the doll. That, oh, that's the, the most creepy haunted doll. One. Is that Was that you that just set that off right there? Can you tap yes? No. So there's, that's the first time that's gone off. There's multiple energies in here. Thanks for communicating with us, by the way. So. Oh, there's oh, one again. Okay. Oh, what's it saying? Is that no. you on the ball? No. Again? I think you've come in here and you've started talking to us. That's gone again. 
I mean, those just those didn't go off at all last night. In the prison. At all. No. Not once. Do you want us to come find you oh, in the in the room that you're in? That you usually hang out in? Okay, I'm gonna grab one of these. Okay. And it's not gonna hurt you. I'm gonna set this by you. Okay. Okay, I'm gonna ask you to touch this device right here every time you see a Okay, that's Charlie. That's Charlie again. Okay, Charlie. Every time you see a letter that's in your name, touch this little box. I see you hit the letter A already. Is A the first letter in your name? It's spelled out hi. Really? H-I. Hi. Okay. Hi. 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 <laughs> That's hey. We're, we're friendly again. Thanks for communicating with us so far. Please keep talking to us however you'd like to. Can you spell out your name? Or show us where you are? Maybe, are you in another room? Well, once again, like the, the cat ball, right? How that was going on and on and on, and now it's not gone off at all. That's weird. And, and, and you know, and all last night, the whole, like, what were there, seven hours? We had ten cat, not one went off. I mean, there's yeah. something going on. This is the most haunted doll right there. Yeah, it's weird. And it's like now it hasn't gone off. So if it's a defective ball going on and on and on, it's it's just been dead again. You know, I think, I honestly think that whatever's here was telling us that it's here, but the object is not here in this room. Okay. I feel like it wants us to go to a different room. All just right. the vibe that I'm getting based on these answers. Okay. And it's saying hi. So what do you think? I think we should move to another room. Go to another room. And then we should go lights out fully. I'll turn this camera off. Maybe the lights are intimidating. Is this big light intimidating and kind of scary you I, I and you. you like almost like you me and you yeah maybe it wants me it can't spell out <laughs> it's kind of creepy if you like any of these dolls the most you can show us which one that is right now one more time, but we're going to go to a different room and try to find whoever's talking to us. Why? <laughs> why? Why? Yeah, why? <laughs> it's like instead of spelling out, it's like, why? Yeah, why? Because we want to talk to you. We want to figure out who lives here. And then maybe if there's something we can do for you, we can do it for you. Right. But you have to just tell us who you are. Or you don't even have to tell us who you are. You can just tell us something about you. Okay, so we're going to listen to the advice of whatever was in the doll room. It seems like it's attached to something in this museum. I don't know exactly what it is, but we're going to try almost solve this mystery of who's here in the museum tonight or what's here. We're gonna use the Spirit Talker app, one of our favorite apps. This is an amazing paranormal device, just some of the stuff that we've gotten, but we're here in the hallway. At the end is that room with all the dangerous objects. So I'm just gonna turn this on. To whoever's here in the museum or in this house, I think we were just talking to you in there. Can you tell us which direction we should walk. Or you could even describe something about the room that you're in right now. We're just trying to figure out where you are and it's completely pitch black in here so we don't know. All 
Are you here? Yes, I'm here. Oh, what? Wow. That's crazy. Yo, immediately, dude. Yeah, you got it. Yes, I'm here. Okay. Thank you so much. Who are you? Wow, that's wild. Immediate. Can you tell us which room you're in? We want to figure out which object or which item you like the most in here. Tell us something about what you see right now. Or you can make a noise to let us know what room you're in. He pushed. He pushed? Maybe he pushed the make a noise or Are you saying that you're in this room? Like to open the door? The guy who owns Home. Home. So are you saying that this room right here that he pushed the door open to? It's the only room that we went into that's got a closed door. Are you saying that's your home? You're in this room? Ew. Ew. Now that's weird. Because hmm. right here is the medical room. Yeah, sure. Well, maybe let's, let's go with that. Okay, you that. said ill. We're in. Are you back there? Do you want us to come back there? Okay, if you want us to come back, you gotta keep making the noise. Okay. You know what I feel like? What? I feel like rich. Rich. That's a commit. That's a name. What I feel like is that whatever is in that room was trying to keep us in that room before, yeah, yeah. and there was something else that was talking to us that was coming in, you know? We kept asking, are you the one that's in this room? It would say no. Something over by the- No, room. I didn't. No, I didn't. Mm, okay, well. Oh, okay. Well, that's, again. But that's, the truth, I though. think that we're talking to the second spirit now. Okay. Like, and that makes perfect sense. The one in there was telling us that it stays in there. And right when we got down here, we're talking to this thing. It calls us back. You said... Jeffrey. Jeffrey. Oh, oh my God. Yes, that is me. That's, that's his name. That's me. You're the one that's wanted to know a name so much. It I said have. your own name. Here you go. Thank you for acknowledging me. That's kind of that. freaky, man. Yeah. This is also the most common object he thought he had is the bed. So, you know his name, he's been, it's almost like it's taunting you, because you've been saying, oh, name, 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 and then Jeffrey, it says your Dude, name. What do you want me to know? Let me know, speak in that device, use the words that are in that device, and let me know what you want from me. What I'm trying, we're trying to find out is if you're the one talking, are you attached to one of the objects in the home here? And if so, what's the object? Can you tell me? Bench. 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 Okay, we got to look. Okay, do you want us to go to the bench? Okay, the bench could be... I mean, is there a bench? Is that where you want us to go to the bench? I'm trying to figure out where the bench will. There's benches on the dolls, I think. I see in here. I'm trying to find a bench. Let's go to the bench. I don't see a bench in here. Is there a bench in here? Go in. Ghost. Oh, ghost. 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 Okay. Hope is over there. Okay. If you're talking to me, you have to let us know a little bit more. Where or what object are you associated with? It's gonna be Charlie again, dude. Oh, 
Oh, dude, the lights went off. What? The lights went off. Eight. Eight. Eight? Eight. The light was going off in here. Oh. Eight. I feel energy again in here. Like an eight-year-old? Eight. Okay. We're trying to find where you are in the house, an object that you're associated with. Are you over here? You have to be, we're really trying to get down to where you're attached to. Which doll or object in the house are you attached to? Tell me or show me. Just say, say the name of the item. You can say car, book, doll, puppet. So I think you said ill because you wanted us to come to the surgery room. Okay. Let's Every time we leave this room, yes. it's calling us. I know, I don't get it. It's always Charlie. I know. <laughs> That's what the scary part, I mean, it's always Charlie. Charlie, if it's you, just say your name in this box right here. Can you just say your name so we know? Make it easy. Please. Knox. Knox? Okay. Go ahead and do some knocks for us. Okay, we're going to come back down here. This is where I feel like you are. Can you knock? You said you wanted to knock? Something like this? Can you open this door for us right here? This one, so we can come in. Darkness. Darkness. Oh, that's what the did dark they call room. this room? The dark room. You just went totally blurry. Still blurry. Let's go in. This room really does feel bad. It's definitely dark. Can you tell us which item you're attached to? Because I think we're dealing with something a little more powerful and a little less positive this time. Six. Six? six. Okay. The 666 Bible right here. Really? Right, okay. right to okay. my right. There we go. Oh, weird. So this Bible was open to page 666. A family cat died. Family members got sick. They were hearing voices and oppressive energy. Car accident, six black humans. Darkness. Silhouettes. Darkness again. Six black silhouettes, darkness. darkness. And we're in the dark okay. room. And there's burning on the Bible. So they think there's just something evil attached. And you know what's really crazy? It's almost true, man, that we got ill before. This thing right here says this. I don't know. I didn't hear anything. I thought I heard a thing. I mean, I mean. But this Bible's from an abandoned hospital. Ill. Yeah. And it says right here okay, that yeah. people were getting well, sick and okay. it said darkness twice. Well, are you attached to this Bible? Can you say something dark or religious? Maybe like Satan, the devil, God, Jesus, something so that we know that we're talking about this Bible? You can confirm it for worried. us. Worried. Worried. Don't be worried. We're not going to try and cleanse you or anything. We just want to talk to you because you're obviously a strong energy. Sick. 
sick. Oh, he had illness. Ill sick. And sick. Okay. And sick is almost six. But we're back. Six. But aren't we back into? You're really confirming that this is it, the Bible that you're attached to, um, and to help us confirm that that's true. Can you say any kind of religious word or anything to do with the Bible to let us know that you're indeed attached attached to the Bible to this Bible here? I'm like, I can't even let you speak the words. Uh, I know. Just give us one word of confirmation. I know you can do it. Children here. Children here. Well, there's that creepy doll. Yeah. Hope. I think we should get the equipment and move it in here and do okay. the thorough stuff. Okay, let's do it. Vortex. Vortex. Oh shit, look at the doll. Oh, oh my god. Okay, wow. Six and six. Right when it said, okay. Whoa! Oh. Oh my gosh, okay. Oh my god, it, okay. we found oh, the item. We found it. it. This is it. This is the first time this has gone off. Okay. And it stopped too, so it shows it's not. Oh. Whoa, oh, that's man, crazy. Man. Was, that? was that you that just set this off? Oh, that was, that was intense, man. Oh, that was. So when we're investigating kind of dark energies, we always want to be careful with what we're doing or saying with them because we don't want to have attachments to ourselves. That area that we were in that night was one of the heavier feelings that I have felt in a long time and wasn't a place I wanted to stay for too long. So we always realize we have to always be careful when we're around dark energies, be it in a murder room or in a room with a doll that has an evil entity attached to it as we don't want it to be attached to us when we leave, so we just have to be careful. Okay. The last two words, it said, yes, over here, and over there. Oh, okay. Something just came okay. in the room right, right there. there. Okay, thanks for, for joining us. Now, the paranormal music box hasn't gone off last night, I don't think, again, at all or in the room, and as I've had it focused on hope, it's gone off twice. Injury. Injury. It's gone off twice. You were injured? So I think the person that's attached to the satanic Bible... Visitor. Is that visitor? Injured visitor. What was the the name of the person that died, perished in the crash? Oh, there was like a... Okay. I don't know if we're gonna call it an aura, but something went right in front of this, like a big, from 666 across the screen, it went like a fluffy floaty. Oh, there was like a, oh, there was like a. Okay, so I think you're in here. We've got all these different devices set up so that we can show where you are in here. Right when I asked. Yeah, uh, go ahead. Yeah, can you really grab that and show us that it's you? Oh, this thing again. Not gonna hurt you. They're standing right here somewhere. This is the proximity meter that shows when something is standing. So there's something standing right here. That thing proves it. But what is it? Are you standing in the doorway because you're afraid to come into this room? I really want to know if there's something attached to that doll. Possibly something demonic. Leviathan. That word was brought up in here by, by a past investigator, right? Yeah. If you are over there in that doll... Below. Below. Hell. Okay, you were given the name Hope, and they said you've moved before, but it'd be great if you would move for us, but at the very least, can you try to use your energy and make this light go off in front of you? Can you let us know that you're actually with us? Hmm. 
You want to try the DR60? Yeah. Okay, so we're going to put a little toy on top of the Bible. Wait, see if the thing's on. It is. It's a REM pod. Oh, weird. Okay. So we put a little toy or a tool on top of the Bible there. We're going to ask you some, some questions because I think we figured out where you are. Okay, so you brought us into this room and you made this device go off for us. What's the number again that is right where you're attached here? Can you tell me the name that this doll over here in this case goes by? Say her name. Can you tell me what it's doing outside right now? As far as the weather is concerned, is it sunny or windy? Can you say what it's doing outside? And again, if you are associated with this Bible, which it sounds like you are, can you say any kind of religious word that definitely has a religious meaning? Okay, guys, uh, we're going to review the DR60 info right now. Let's see what we get. I'm ready. I heard something. There's something. I heard a really loud bang out here when you were just listening to that. Like a thump. This is where you have to listen because there's some stuff in there. Did they you hear that? Just that little thump? Yeah. Are you out there in the hall? It's right here. Okay. Step in. You're welcome to, to come and join us. Thanks. That's so weird. Is there something you want to tell us? It's like the thing is stuck right here. Hmm. Well, it, it could be one of two things. This thing could either be too afraid to come in. Yeah. Or now that we're here, it could be something that's in this room, standing in the door, trying to keep us from leaving. You know what I mean? Because mm -hmm. yeah. it's on the inside of the door. You want to use this and see if you get any yeah. responses on that? Let me just question what, what's there. Let me just ask one more time, if you're out there in the hall, I think I just heard you make a loud noise. Could you do that again? Okay, everybody, if you are the thing that's right here in the hallway, or you're the thing that's attached to this Bible right here that apparently has a very bad evil attachment, I'm going to ask you again, just like my dad did, some questions. If you are attached to that Bible from the abandoned hospital, what are you?
a little tiny noise. I don't know if you heard that. Do you worship Satan, the devil? Were you ever a human? Do you want to hurt one of us? What was that? It's pushed over. If you're out in the hallway, why can't you come in this room? Or if you can come in this room, why don't you? found the object that it's attached to but it's almost like it wanted to lure us in here and then it's quiet hmm. why okay so you tried to lure us in here it worked we came in here why is there another spirit more powerful than you that wanted us to come into this room one more time, can you tell us who you are? You, you have to hear it. Yo, me. listen. Yes, there is right after this. Oh, big, yes, there yes. is. Big, big, big. So the first, the first one is like a really clear, yeah, right, and the second one they're yelling it. Yep. Okay. I have an idea. Hey, then, we've just felt weirdly drawn to this thing, and it says the thing said that there's a, a spirit more powerful than what's on the six 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 Bible, and I'm gonna put on the DR sixty, oops, and the spirit talker. Right here. That light's too thin. It's this thin. If this is you, Hope, what's your real name? Many guy here. Okay, so if many died here, tell us the exact number that died here. So you're saying many people died and we need to investigate their deaths? 
Where at? Can you tell me how one of you died? What was... How'd you die? Like TB or heart attack or murdered? Tell me how you, you died. Specifically how you died, Ron. Do you like scaring and hurting people? I heard you scratch somebody. Why don't you scratch me, Hope? I hope you do. Can you see me? We do see you, Hope. So since we do, Tell us if you're good or evil. Say good or evil. Which one are you? Can you see me? Again. The same phrase. It's weird. We to back. Twice in a row. I've never seen that. What do you say? What, do you, what would you ask with that question? Where are you? Tell I was killed. If we see you, tell us where to look. Because we don't know. Are you really a little girl? Are there other spirits here, Hope? Like the pal? There's a noise. I'd say that's a yes. review these and see what else we get. We've gotten quite a bit already. Ready? Okay, so if any died here, tell us the exact number that died here. I don't know for the her nine. Mm -hmm. something really freaky wow. in this room man that was weird if you're yeah. still in here is there any way you could do one more thing for us knock on something touch one of our little toys I just got a whiff of like smoke <laughs> okay guys we're getting ready to go we're not going to be back here. So maybe use that device right there. I'd like whoever wants to use their energy to say the name of this doll right here for me. People. Okay, people. Knife. All right, everybody, so real quickly, I'm gonna interrupt the video. You know that our videos survive off of interaction, and if you didn't know that, you know now. So the most important thing you can do if you're watching this video is like the video, leave me a comment, and make sure you're subscribed with the notifications on. Every single week, we give away a gift bag to a viewer of the show, so all you have to do this week is comment night at the museum in the comment section below and like the video. 
We're gonna pick one of you lucky commenters and ship you a gift bag. Everyone who's gotten a gift bag has loved them in the past. So yeah, you can be the next person up. But I'm gonna give you 10 seconds to go comment night at the museum and like the video now. 10, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. All right, everybody, so make sure to like the video, make sure to comment. We have hundreds of thousands of people watching every week, but it really does help the videos and they're free to watch. So yeah, a like costs no money and it means the world to me. So thank you all so much and uh, I'll let you get back to the video now that I'm done begging. Now, obviously it's hard to tell in a museum exactly who you're speaking to because there are hundreds if not thousands of different artifacts in that place, all of them with macabre and paranormal history. I mean, there's lots of different things in the different rooms that people have died in, they've been carried to their grave in, it was owned by someone who's now dead, maybe a curse or another spell was placed on the object. So it's really hard to narrow down a specific entity that you're talking to with an investigation like this our goal is more to communicate with whoever's there. There are certain investigations like the Mothman where we're trying to investigate a certain person or a certain thing. But with the museum, it was anybody who can come through, please come through. And that's why we decided we needed to do an Estes session to try and, and contact one particular entity or person before we left the museum. So we're sitting right now by arguably one of the most famous haunted objects here in the archives of the afterlife. This is the foot book. Now if you remember during the tour, this book allegedly came from the scene of a grisly quadruple homicide. One of the victims who was murdered that day was a young child. Um, there's apparently blood stains or what people think to be blood stains on the book and this item is listed as being extremely haunted in lots of forums and there have been a lot of experiences with this book and in this room so we're gonna do an Estes session to see if we can get to the bottom of who's here in the museum. I'm gonna put the blindfold on. I think you know us by now. My name is Colin. And I'm Jeff. And we're just coming here to talk to you and figure out who you are, so you don't need to be afraid. Can you hear me, Colin? Okay. So, can you tell me, um... Bacon. Can you tell me how you died? Let's start off, first of all, is this your book? I like reading. Okay, so it is your book. Are you happy or sad here, do you think, when you come back here? Would you say you're happy? I have an attitude. That's okay. But would you say that you're, you're mostly happy? No one talks. Are you mostly happy or sad when you come back to this room here with your book? How do you feel? Tired. You feel tired, okay. So this area kind of drains you. Are you here with anybody else? A few. A few, okay, like who? You can either give me names or you can tell me if they're like an aunt or mom and dad. Who come, Who's with you? Who comes with you? Fireman. Okay. The fireman comes with you? Is he nice? Rob. Okay, fireman Rob. He comes with you? Why does he come with you? Dark. Or darkness. Ugh, I got a chill when I okay. read that one. Isn't that where we got twice? Would you say that Rob, the fireman? That's the four of us. Four, okay. So you have Rob, the fireman. Who's the other three? Who else comes with you? 
There's two more actually, you and the fireman Rob and who else? It's okay, you can tell us. No eyes. No eyes. Can you tell us who the other two that come with you are? Who are they? With you and Rob, the fireman? You can, you can tell Just me. Just said it. Well, I didn't hear you. Can you please tell me who the other two are that come with you? With you and Rob? You can tell us. Ooh, I get chill coming in. And again, no eyes. No eyes. No eyes. Okay, now I'm just going to go with this because I, I, what that means. I know a Native American. I, I'm not going to say his first name. His last name is called No Eyes. I wonder if there's some Native American people with you. The shadow. Okay. So I'm going to just say it's Rob... The fireman, a, per, a native named No Eyes, and then the shadow. Is that right? Who comes with you here? You can just. Nope. Really? Okay. Ew, I feel like creepy all of a sudden. Okay, who are. Be quiet. Hmm. Okay, so. My room. It sounds like you're kind of maybe being, again, you're safe with us. I was talking, I believe, Cabbage. to the little girl that owns this book. It's me. Okay. So don't let anybody make you feel bad. They're going to cuss me out. Okay. They, don't worry. We're here for you. Rob. Oh, I feel cold back here. Okay. I'm just getting cold all around me. So, the little I'm girl... stressed. So, little girl, again, I'm going to go back to this. It sounds like you've got some people around you that are not very, maybe, nice. You can move Only away. Only in one. Okay, you can move away from them. You realize that you can leave. I'll murder you. That's not the little girl. Hey, little girl, you can actually cross over and go towards back to your parents, okay? Will you do that? Do you understand? You don't have to stay here if you're just visiting. Go back to I'm your... I'm Anna. Anna? Okay, we never found out your name. But we're going to ask on that after this, but Anna, you know you can go back to where it's safe, right? For robbing a bank. Okay, so the shadow, who is the shadow? Anna, if that's... He's coming. Okay, Anna, do you remember... Over there. Okay, that's okay. But Anna, just so we know it's you, do you remember how old what? you were? Do you remember how old you were, Anna? I'm over 21. Okay. Or, gotta be over 21. Okay, could be, I don't know how long ago this took place. Muskrat. What's your favorite place in this house? Where do you like to hang out the most? Or with which, which object? Is it your book or maybe it's something else? The flowers. Okay. You like the flowers, that would make sense. Charlie. Who's Charlie? Tell me who Charlie is. Dancer. Okay. So, Anna, we know when you... Don't need help. Okay. Get out. So, Anna, is Charlie someone that you like? Is it someone you dance with? What do you do with Charlie? Protects him. Protects? Okay. So... Gow. Pepper spray. Sounds like you've got some nice people with you and some bad people with you. That room. 
What, what's that room called? Which room? Funeral. Okay, the funeral room that has, has the caskets in there? That makes sense, okay. Oh, doll. Which doll? Oh! Don't find him. Okay, there seems to be a fair amount of you here. I'd like to go back to talk to Anna. No. Yes. Anna, you can step forward, please. D did you dance with Charles? Quiet. Hey, no, I'm asking. For the goal. Okay. Quiet. <laughs> Listen, Anna. I guess, Anna, do you, Space. Anna, do you realize you can go back from visiting? Stocks her? are up. Invader. So, Anna, it sounds Home like... Home invasion. Okay. So, we're, we're back to all this with... I've had enough. How you passed and everything. It sounds like you're understanding a lot of this. The firemen probably had come robbed and maybe find you guys. I don't know if that's the case, but I'm sorry. Where's the parents? So, Anna, do you know where your parents are? Come by soon. I think there's too many people here. They're in hell. Hmm. Anna, are you still here? Let's let's just get to to you. Anna, can you tell me if you're here? Just say you're here. I say you're here. Ah, uh, I can't tell if that's good. Yeah, I feel cold and like chilly. Okay, if you are Native American, she's mine. Mm, okay. I get back to the shadow person that's maybe not the best person. You asked for me? Yes. Shadow person. Were you here? Jeff! Oh, okay. Jeff, like that. Yep, you got me. That's the second time it said Jeff, because it said Jeff on Spirit, or Spirit Talker. Yeah, okay, so shadow. Come join. Where? Alone. Hmm. I don't think I'm going to do that tonight. The room! Oh, the room! That's it. Come join alone the room. Me or him? I don't know if you asked that. No, I think it means me. But... I like you. Okay, so the shadow yeah, person. Are you an actual... Are you human? Or are you something else? Are you human? Shadow person or being? Whatever you are. What Old. Okay, yes, you're an old being. Would you say you're good or evil? Bad. Mm, okay, you're bad. That's what I thought. Anna. Go alone. Nope, I don't want to talk to you anymore. I want Anna. Anna, can you step forward? Anna, step forward and just tell me it's you. In a nice way. Anna, do you know who I am? Help me. Okay, that is Anna. Anna, you have to go back to a good place that you can find your parents. There's so many opportunities. I'm fine here. No, you're, you're not good here. You have, I think the shadow being, whatever that is, is not nice. Foot. So Anna, you said to help you. I'm asking, I'm trying to help you now by saying you can go now. Please go back to a, a safe Words. place. Go back to a safe place, okay? Do you understand? Focus on me. I am. Do you understand? Leave now. Bummer. Just say goodbye. To let us know you've left. Say goodbye. Okay. This isn't making any sense. Oh my god, it's so dark in here. Does anything make sense to you? 
Yeah, I think some did. Again, I'm trying to narrow down, you know, but I want, I'm want. i curious if he knows the name of the girl. You came up with, you said Anna. I'd like to find out if that could be her name. And there's also four people, Robert, Rob the fireman, the shadow person, and then you, you mentioned uh, One Eyes. No Eyes. I heard no that eyes, twice. No Eyes, I mean. And that's a Native American uh, Ernie White Eyes, Ernie No Eyes, that's an actual Native American name. Interesting. So I think you probably came up with four, uh, uh, and her, and she's the third, the fourth is Anna. Okay. Yeah, you have to listen to it. Well, thanks, Anna, or whoever that was. Oh. That was creepy. The only thing that I could make out was when it said something about alone, that room. Yeah, it will make sense more. There's some stuff with that as well. Should I quit filming? At the end of it, uh, you just kind of think about all these objects that have been sent there. Some of them uh, he has collected. Many of them, though, people have gotten rid of them because they didn't want them in their house anymore. They felt it was causing problems for them. And it was interesting that someone wanted to gather all those in one location and really be around that all the time. And so personally for myself, I wouldn't want to be in that creepy of a place with all those attachments. I could kind of feel all the different, you know, feels again I get when I walk into those type of places and just made sure no one followed me home or us home. Uh, and that really stood out to me the most is that someone like Steve uh, really has an interest in collecting those objects and kind of taking them off the hands of others that don't want them in their life. So it's a place I think is very interesting to visit, but I wouldn't want to be living amongst those things. So at the end of the day, that museum is definitely haunted. Like I said, we planned on being there for about an hour and a half. Initially, we ended up being there for over eight hours. That place is eerie. There's so much to see. I would highly recommend you go check out the archives of the afterlife. If you're ever in West Virginia, it's a, it's a museum that you can go visit. Yeah, it's hard to tell who we were talking to once again, but as you can see in the footage, there was definitely something there with us and it wanted to talk. But you don't always come away with answers. That's the thing with the paranormal and that's the thing that you're gonna see in my videos. I'm not gonna sit here and tell you, oh, we were talking to Jacob, the 12 year old who died in 1943 from pneumonia. We don't have those answers. And honestly, I don't think that you can really get them. I mean, every once in a while you can get lucky and hit a jackpot, but it's more like we're searching for the evidence of an answer. Like the answer's there, but we just don't have it yet if that makes sense to you. But we wrapped up that night, we had a great evening, we had a long drive home through the thunderstorm, and uh, yeah, it was just another great investigation to add to the books. But it's Colin Brown here, I hope you're enjoying these extra long episodes. You know we love you guys so much. Thank you for watching, thank you for enjoying these videos. Have a great rest of your week, and as always, stay spooky. Hello! <laughs>